Hi, welcome to the Freeman Conversations. I'm Joe Bertocca, the online editor of the Freeman, and this is another edition of Power Women, our way of paying tribute to women who are not afraid to make a difference. Joining us today in this edition are two women that I look up to. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I'm very glad that they have that they said yes or invitation. One of these women is an educator for the longest time and now manages her own school. She is a directress of Communication Arts Learning Center, at the same time, managing partner of Communication Arts Training Group, Miss Margie Visitation. Ma Marge, thank you very much for being here. Good afternoon to all the women out there. Good afternoon. Yes, thank you. And of course, sitting beside Ma Margie is a former counselor in Cebu City and now very busy capacitating both women and men in the grassroots level. Also a former educator, <laughs> former city civil city councillor Carmen Pyramide. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, <laughs> Happy Women's Month to both of you. <laughs> okay, let's begin our discussion by asking you to say a few words to our viewers. Good afternoon, let's celebrate life. It's Women's Month. <laughs> Good afternoon. It's nice to be here with Jobrick and Marjorie. <laughs> Happy Women's Month. Mom Carmen, you've been away from the limelight for quite some time now. <laughs> <laughs> limelight. Yes, yes, but you are not, definitely are not um, new, uh, you are not a stranger to public service. You've been in public service since um, you know, most of your life, starting when you were serving the barangay. And even when you were an officer, and eventually as district governor of Toastmasters International, you've been serving a lot of people. Mm -hmm. What is it about serving others that empowers you? Uh, it's like uh, in Toastmasters, we, we, we join Toastmasters because we want to learn and in the process also teach. So that's it. I, I like to teach people. I like to uh, empower them. I want to make them informed. That's what I like to do in my life. And in, the public, yeah, in, in public service, how did you get into public service? Because, like, I challenged my husband that <laughs> 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 I can do better, oh. better in public service. Better <laughs> Better living. No, actually, because you know, Aven, because Aven is a. If she says no, it's really no. Mm. <laughs> but with me, I can say no and, at, and, and in the process make a say yes. Do a yes, no? So I can convince people. So that's why I told him I can be a better politician than you. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> that's on the record. She's of course talking about her husband, Attorney Aden Piramide. He concedes to that. <laughs> But you started your public service in the barangay level mm -hmm. as counselor. As barangay counselor. As, uh, yes. Of which oh, barangay? Barangay, 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 barangay. barangay. How was it? How was it serving in the barangay level at that point in time? I enjoyed barangay. The, I, I enjoy the barangay, the barangay because uh, I can do things, I can be an administrator, I can be a legislator. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the council, I can only be a legislator. How long was this um, in the barangay? In the barangay, I think it was about four to five years. I'm not sure. I have forgotten. <laughs> what age now? <laughs> <laughs> what I did in the barangay is I involved people mm -hmm. to help themselves. Mm -hmm. Like we, I, I, I solicited for uh, materials so mm -hmm. that we can make canals. Mm -hmm. And we did the canals ourselves. The people, the, the constituents doing it. We even made a rip prop. That's a, a, that's a big job. So we, the men would do the work, the women would cook for the, for the workers mm. so that they get to eat for lunch, they get to have snacks. So that's what I did. I, I also... Were you, the only, in, were you the only female in the Barangay Council at that at time? At that time, I think there were two of us. I'm not sure. <laughs> 
Um, I even enrolled six to um, it's like uh, out of school you where the teachers from the public school come to the come to the barangay to teach them, and they they were uh, knowing the right thing. You know, they did not know how to read, they did not know how to write. So after a week, they were very happy that they could write their names of our Very nice. Yeah. And very nice. I, I asked for the that ed to to have an arts program in our barangay. I also had. Nursery school, mm -hmm. daycare center mm -hmm. built for us by the Abuelites. Mm -hmm. But that's, I think that's what's nice about, as you pointed out earlier, like, what's nice about being in the barangay because even if you are not the barangay captain, for example, even if you belong to the council, you can still execute yes. projects, implement and, projects. And if you would notice, most of them were for education, mm -hmm. teaching how to read and write. Mm -hmm. Asking barangay youth to involve in us, and then after that, some of them were pastors, and they could proceed to high school mm -hmm. or proceed to grade mm -hmm. whatever level. Mm -hmm. Then it's something that I really am very happy about. Mm -hmm. I want to really education. I want to educate people. But you moved eventually to the city level mm -hmm. when you became city councillor. Mm -hmm. Why did you not uh, pursue the barangay captain post first? <laughs> <laughs> um, That's supposed to be the natural trajectory, right? No, yeah, yeah, because uh, before the before there was a, bar a barangay election, there was the national election, local election already. Mm -hmm. So uh, somebody had me to join the council, the, the, the council fleet, so that's why I joined. Was it easy for you to decide to run for city councilor? Um, I was already into it, public service, so I thought that if I go to the council, I, would, I can do better, uh, bigger things for the people, okay. for the city. So, uh, it was just uh, like uh, moving up, mm -hmm. moving up thing mm -hmm. from barangay to. I was I was president of all the barangay that I was, mm -hmm. and I also was able to serve them, the barangay. I was able to educate them also. Mm -hmm. I taught them how to do reports. Mm. I taught uh, them how to do uh, things for the barangay. It's like sharing what I, I, I know and sharing what I like. That uh, I, I it, in a way, empower them also. Mm -hmm. But you have your official organization, right? The League yeah. of Barangay Councils? Yeah. And, you, and you led that. You I that the before. President. President. I was the president. Did your expectations, did the council meet your expectations? No. <laughs> no. Why? I was not happy. I was not happy because we could. I was in the opposition, so mm. we could not do so many things. Mm. Uh, like, say, for example, I wanted teachers from Manila coming over to Cebu City mm. and teaching our barangay teachers, mm. our public school teachers, mm. because my experience was that every summer. Teachers would come to me, ask for solicitation because they will go to Manila mm -hmm. to study. So how about the mm -hmm. teacher coming over? Mm -hmm. So he could teach more mm -hmm. than two or five teachers that we sent to Manila. So I I made a proposal that I was cut short. Mm -hmm. We do not have a budget. Mm, okay. I also had a a project to put up barangay schools mm. in the in the mountain areas mm. of Cebu City. It was also cut short. But you could we didn't also... have teachers. We didn't have them. it. Yeah. Only stayed in the committee on laws. Mm, okay. It did not go any further. 
But even if you did, uh, if those proposals were approved, still you cannot implement those because you're a councillor. Uh, your primary job of legislation. Yes. yes. But then if, if, if the council approves of it, then at least that's an achievement. The yeah. That's then an achievement. it goes to the mayor. It's, Correct. It's up to him if he approves it, uh, if, if he vetoes it or not. Correct. Right? Correct. So it's not mine. Mm -hmm. It's his. It's not. Right. It's his club. Let's go back to you in a bit. Let's talk to Ma, to Ma Margie. You were you were an educator. Well, you were still an educator, but you taught mm -hmm. at the University of San Jose Recoletos for a long time, mm -hmm. and you only retired just uh, about two years ago. Two years ago, as a full time teacher. As a full time teacher, yeah, yes. I'm a part time teacher of uh, the school. Mm -hmm. I'm just handling two subjects, and uh, the subjects are just enough. Mm -hmm. What led you to education? It was in the family. It's an our beings actually. My great grandfather educator, my mother educator, and mm -hmm. two in the family members are educator. Basically, you know what? When my mom was teaching in a certain school, and I would uh, watch her, and I would tell myself, just one day I would be like my mom. Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, when I was, I guess, eight years old. I would be calling our neighbors and I would be telling them, hey, we can have lesson here, this is A, this is B. <laughs> and after that, well, basically, I told myself my passion was just to touch people's lives. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you took up in college um, education, of course. Yes. Uh -huh. And did you teach right away after graduation? Well, I got married. <laughs> <laughs> Before graduation. <laughs> so, after graduation, yes, yes, I got at the Philippine Christian Basco mm -hmm. School and I transferred to Secretary School for Boys. Mm -hmm. After which, I received a call from the University of San Jose Nicoletos telling me that there was this vacancy. Mm -hmm. I applied and I told myself if I would be serving students, I'd rather serve my fellow mm, Okay. Okay, so the ones closest it was a tough decision mm -hmm. because that year I would have become a permanent teacher at school, if I had school for boys then. Mm, I see. And uh, I told myself I'd rather serve my fellow Senians and I got there for twenty eight long years. Uh, I know twenty six. Twenty eight, mm -hmm. twenty eight. We can call it all thirty one years. Mm -hmm. um, this was in San Jose. But if my Marge's face is familiar to you, that's also because <laughs> alongside teaching, she was moonlighting. <laughs> 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 but the person knew about it. Yes, of course. Of course, of course. About of course, it. Of course. <laughs> and then what was funny about it was when there was a role given to me, I had to tell my boss. Mm. I had to tell, of course, the top dons. And they just told me as long as there would be no absences. Of course, yes. So I had to tell the director, mm. the can you just try to have this after my class and it was very good he, mm. he gave in <laughs> so you must have seen Ma Margie on ABS-CBN <laughs> oh, well, thank you <laughs> several so several deles areas uh -huh. did, did they call those deles areas before yes yes uh, it was Sarangke it was his advertisement but mm. every time I would accept a role I would try to scan the script mm. because basically I'm a teacher not an artist mm. And there was a role that was given to me, and the advertisement was very good. The pay mm. was good. I had to say no because it was it was a sexy scene, my good. Mm, uh, and uh, mm. what if my students would see me? So I had to turn it down. Correct. Um, You're very conscious of the roles yes, you accepted. Yes, what yes, led you into acting? Well, Bernard. Ah, uh, you know Bernard. <laughs> Your husband. <laughs> yes, had this role, and then he would simply tell me, "March, you can be with me." And just try to check it out. And so I was there. The director saw me and he offered a role for me. And I said, Indirect, that could not be. After four months, he gave me another script, a very good one, a very good teleserie. I was challenged. They accepted it. And that was it. That started all. But you know what? One good thing when you're in the center of the teacher, you're an artist. So when the director would say, I don't like her expression. Change her facial expression. I couldn't say, hey, I'm a teacher. Don't tell me that. <laughs> right. I would say, yes, director. Thank you so much, director. At the end of the day, I would always tell the director, Jure Miracuentes is out in Manila. Mm. Under Julie, 
vino, vino uh, in Manila, in also. brought in vino. No. Yeah. Um, but we still keep in touch, even until now. And uh, what what the area was this? Saranghe, there was this. Uh, forgot the other one. Like um, it was taken from uh, the Devil's Wear Prada, something like that. Uh, okay. And the, the Saranghe mm -hmm. was it was uh, I think uh, five months. It went on for five months, mm. and after that, the advertisements came. But I made it a point that teaching and acting are two different things. Mm. So at times when you have the shooting, it would end at around five o'clock in the um, evening, in, in the morning. morning. Uh, because my husband was the one who pushed me off the cliff. Oh, I should do this, I do this, and so <laughs> support. So I did the support of Gordon Hart. So no problem about it. So. I would be wearing makeup and I report to a seven o'clock class. Wow, how did you manage that? It, it, it went on just for two weeks to three weeks when the teleserie was about to end. Mm. And I told myself I would never be absent with just because of this. When I said yes to this role, that would mean I would also be committed to my I would commit myself to my students and not to be absent at all. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. But uh, I had a great time. But about it was a therapy for me. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. And while waiting for the time for me to have episode one or episode two, well, I would be checking the best papers <laughs> somewhere out there because I didn't want to waste time. Mm. And uh, still, every time I would remember it, time flies so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Mom Carmen, you were the district governor of Toastmasters International. This is the organization for public speaking and leadership. How did you get into Toastmasters, by the way? I, like her, I accompanied a event in a <laughs> <laughs> It was your husband's fault. Uh, it was a man who was really interested in Toastmasters. In fact, it took me about six months before I joined Toastmasters. He mm -hmm. was already a member, and it took me six months to become a member. But before you can become the district governor, which means you headed the whole country, mm -hmm. the Philippines is one district, you had to go through several leadership positions. Yes. Each time I, I accept a position, I always ask the elders, what is, am I expected to do there? What am I expected? Okay. I do not want to take positions which I do not know how to handle. Mm. I do not, I, 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 it's something in me that I do not like to, to grab everything even if I do not know how to manage it. So presumably you had to be club president, mm -hmm. you had to be an area governor, <laughs> you had to be a division governor, and then in the national level you have to be a district officer. Mm -hmm before you became? I was a secretary before I became the, the three officers, the three top officers. Top three. Top three. Yeah, in the Philippines. You are certainly very accomplished to women. Do you think consciously of your gender when you do things? Do you, do you always think about it as a, as a factor in yeah. your success, in your success? <laughs> PG-13. Me too. <laughs> You know, uh, when I became a Toastmaster, a, a district governor, I tried to use my charm <laughs> so that everybody will cooperate with me. Everybody mm -hmm. will do their share. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot be a good governor if, if everybody is just having a happy, happy time mm -hmm. in meetings, mm -hmm. no? They have to accomplish educational goals. That's what we have in those masters, mm -hmm. educational goals. So I, 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 the first thing I did when I became a district governor was to write all the past district governors, mm -hmm. active or inactive. Mm -hmm. I asked for their support. No man would do that. Yes. Only women would know how to do that. <laughs> Well, why did you do it? I just want them to help me. Mm. I just want them to know that even if they're no longer active in the Toastmasters, they can still help me. I can still ask, I would like to ask for their help. So 
in fact one governor was no longer was no longer in active reinstated his membership oh, because of your request because of my request and then because his club is already dead he revived the club and gave me another club no man would do that <laughs> diba? at that point in time most of the district governors were men yes okay. yes and of course you were, you managed to charm your way into the men's heart and then um I also had a data of all those masters of district of the district uh, who are already so who are three three speeches away from becoming a competent toastmaster mm. oh, during our time competent no? competent toastmasters I wrote all of them letters you are three speeches away so. Your continue. approach was very personalized. Yeah. Continue delivering your speeches. It, it's not my game, but your game. You get to learn more if you step deliver your speeches. And your strategy definitely worked. Because yes, because in, because in one of the in, in in one of the conventions, one Toastmaster said. Carmen, I have still your letter. letter. Yes. And I my Marge's yes. husband, Sir Bernard, who yes. worked under you yes. in those masters, also can remember yes. receiving one of those letters. Actually, I still have the letter, post it, yeah. and yeah, that was a few years back. And remember the major guitar that you gave Bernard with that letter? You forgot about it, but you know what? I gave old Bernard, my gosh, one of the people that um, have touched your life because the letter stated thank you so much for the help you have so much potential source guy right? yeah. I remember that yeah. <laughs> yes yes and I told Bernard I really want to meet this mom Carmen mm -hmm. yeah because at that time Bernard was I guess a part of those masters mm -hmm. I was in Kenpa mm -hmm. so I don't know if you remember mom Carms but I told you thank you so much for touching the life of my husband I thank you it's very years back <laughs> Very so nice. long time ago. It's very inspiring. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I needed also to barangay officials. I sent mm -hmm. them a birthday cards and Christmas yes, cards. Yes, yes, yes. Now everyone does it through text <laughs> <laughs> and private messages. <laughs> but of course, on a larger scale. The little things that men would not like to touch. <laughs> we do. We women do. Right? <laughs> Perhaps we can concede <laughs> in that power area. Of words, not the power of words. Yeah, man. yeah. I was just about to say on a larger scale, your strategy worked because, if I'm not mistaken, the Philippines became, became eventually one of the most outstanding districts number in one. the world. Number one. Yeah. Yeah. Number one yes, in the world. And the first when you were district, district governor. First for the district to become number one. Wow. Okay. Let me put in proper context. What does it take? for a district to be number one? Um, I have always corrected some of the district governors who would say, do this, do this so that we can become number one. What I did was do this so that you can improve yourself. Do this because this will be good for you. Mm. This do, It will help you. So I never mentioned my goals, but I gave them, uh, how do you call it, uh, mnemonics as to mm. how to run their clubs, mm. do a carmen. Carmen, <laughs> 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 yes, yes. <laughs> What did that stand for? I think, I, I was trying to think about it. What was that carmen? It's, I think it's club, it's... I cannot remember the R uh, A R is remittance on time. Mm, payment and membership dues. M A membership. I think membership education. <laughs> if you just do all those things, then your club will be a good club. 
So you love yeah, Carmen. So they will always remember me. Oh, I love Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> you empower the members themselves. Mm -hmm. So they work to achieve your goals. Yeah, they work to achieve my goals. <laughs> but without me telling them, mm. you do this so that I can achieve my goals. You do this because it's good for you. Isn't mm. that right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. If I may go back to my question, um, to Mamarji, when you do something, you think consciously of your gender? I'm a woman doing this? I don't think so. Because growing up with four boys and four girls in the family, our parents treated us equally. Mm. Um, but they had to tell us, do your best. And then we followed the rules that they set. And if we're going to cross the line, we would be responsible with our um, consequences of our actions. Mm. So whatever I have experienced right now has nothing to do with gender. Mm. From my, um, I would say, and I would say consistency, determination, you have humility, mm. gratitude, thank you my parents. Mm. And then you have faith in God, and of course the help of my loved ones, my family members, more of that. Mm. So it was never an issue? Gender was never, and will never be an issue. My parents, when you were in the council, mm -hmm. what was the relationship between the male counselors and the female? How many were you female counselors at the time? One, two, I think there were only two of us. There were only two of us, one in the south and one. I see. What was the relationship between the male and female counselors? Well, it, it's out of the counts, out of the session hall. We're all friends. Mm -hmm. We're all friends. We're very good friends. In fact, we we go around with them. We go to when we do our when we have our liga na mga whatever. So we join them. They also they also call on us. So mm -hmm. we joined them. There, there was no issue. There was no issue as far as you're from opposition or you're with the with mm -hmm. the majority. Um, they treated us equally. Do you think we need more female counselors? If you want a heart in the council, if you want a, a compassion in the council. You would have to need women in the council. Because until today, like uh, this time around, we still have only three mm -hmm. female counselors. Yeah. If that's it. If you if you want really to have a council who can who will really work and who will have the heart, will have the time, will have the the competence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You really need women. How did you make sure that your voice, the female voice, was heard in the council, in a male-dominated council? I, I think in in some of the, in some of the projects that I have, which the the other councillors knew, um, I was able to. Tell them that women are needed. Like, say, for example, uh, when the gender and advocacy uh, was it was rather, it was new during my time, and there was that budget for women in uh, for uh, there was that budget which the barangay could not use because they did not know how to use it. Mm -hmm. I I taught the barangay. Uh, the barangay god chairpersons. I taught them how to prepare a budget. Mm -hmm. I taught them how to prepare a project proposal so that they can use the budget. So then they were able to use their gender and advocacy budget. Um, even if it's supposed to be for men, women, and children, mm -hmm. uh, but more of the projects were for women. Mm -hmm. So it was telling the Telling also the council that this is what you should do. Mm -hmm. Help empower women, help empower your your barangay uh, 
gender and advocacy chairperson so that mm -hmm. they would know how to help the constituents. So you did it through action? I did Showing them, yeah. yes. yes. So I, every, every Saturday, I would gather one group, and then another Saturday, another one group, and then I, I check on the work, I check on the things that they need to do, so they were able to use the budget. Imagine ten percent is ten percent. Mm, right? Correct, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can do a lot of things. I might have to be asking this question to to both of you. Do you think Cebu City is ready for a female mayor? Why have we not had a female mayor? <laughs> <laughs> Not had a female mayor. We've had a female president already. I mean, in fact, two of them. That's the really that's the bias. <laughs> that's the bias that we are experiencing now. Mm, okay. Although there's that uh, there's the uh, women rights, uh, all those uh, women organizations supporting mm. women, but there is that uh, seemingly. Um, we not not teachable bias. Mm. Even I think, I think even women would not vote for a woman mayor. Why do you think so? I I just think so. They <laughs> 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 vote for you <laughs> <laughs> because there are some women who are not really who are not really. Uh, advocates of this women's rights or mm -hmm. who are who don't care about anything but just mm, no i don't like a, a mm -hmm. woman mayor or i do not like a woman president mm -hmm. or i do not want a woman senator there are those kind of women but um i think it is really time for us to have a woman mayor what do you think Mama? same here I mean, who knows? Mm. Who knows, no? So I always believe that there is really time for everything. Mm. So if there is a good material, then why not? Mm. Why not? You can always support that woman. Mm. Because there are a number of, I would say, legislators and uh, decision makers who are women. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, we have the Gaetano mm. and uh, the late uh, Miriam Santiago. There are a number. Yeah, Nasibina is there. Yes, yeah. yes. You've both seen the world um, in, through very keen eyes. What do you think are the challenges that women continue to face today? Black bias. Everybody, everybody uh, thinks that we women are second to them. They because they are. They are. Yeah, ever since we were born, the <coughs> father is always the head. Mm. and the mother the heart mm. the head is higher than the heart mm. so that is what people uh, th this young people think the father is higher than the, the mother right? so that is what is inculcated in their minds mm. so they uh, even in the council when they pass a resolution giving prices the price for this category is this one. The price for the cat this category is this one. The price for the men is higher. The price for the women. So mm -hmm. I see. That that happens. No March, what challenges do you um, continue to see? In our profession, um, my profession, because there is really equality. Yeah? Because we could not compare a male student to a female student. Mm. We do that. It's an issue. Mm. So from our end in the education sector, it's more on the increasing uh, prohibitive um, demand for quality education. Mm. I think so that uh, look at the classrooms, the lack of classrooms, Correct. and then you have uh, the coming of gadgets. Mm. Actually, that is also one of our competitors. Can you just imagine between a teacher and a gadget? Mm -hmm. Some students would prefer the gadget than the teacher. Yeah. 
and then the information overload. Mm. So there is so much information that students do not know which is which. Mm. These aren't just few of our challenges. This is information, of course, we're talking about information even outside yes. the classroom. Yes, yes, just the quality education. And mm. basically, I would also challenge the teachers that, well, there are really teachers, there are still a number of teachers who are committed, no? Mm. Just to own the job, because if they own the job, everything follows. Mm. Everything follows. Right. Well, at least a bit of good news is that in the Philippines, the World Economic Forum um, reported that the gender gap as far as education is concerned, has gone slimmer and slimmer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, more or less, men and women have equal opportunities in education today mm -hmm. in the Philippines. So that's a bit of good news, don't you think? Another thing, uh, Joe Bert, is I also, I personally notice that children these days are at times bullied with gunshot. And when they come to school, um, they are a little bit developmental and they are, I would say, antisocial. Mm -hmm. So we have to communicate with the parents. We have to meet them halfway. Like we had this parenting seminar on the using of gadget alone. Mm -hmm. And we realized that some of them would have six to seven hours for the usage of gadget. So we had to talk to them and we have to tell them can you just try to lessen this to two hours? Mm. Yes. So, because we notice that if there's so much attention to the budget, the attention span of a student is too short. Mm -hmm. So we hope we could tackle this thing. Mm. But we have to meet happy with the parents, but we, we need them. Correct, um, correct. You eventually decided to open your own school, mm -hmm. also about two years ago, Communication Arts Learning Center. Yeah, it's funny, he said. In, in Lisa, specifically. Oh. At the same time, um, you form a training group, communication arts uh, training group. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to um, get into these initiatives? I asked myself, after retirement, where would I go? Because whether you're giving your best shot, mandatory is you have to retire at the age of 60. Mm. What would happen? Number two is also the dream of my mom. My mom would always tell me, you know what, how I wish I would have this school, you would have this school. And honestly, Jobert, before my mom died, the day um, she was rushed to the hospital, she saw the signage. I see. Mm -hmm. Communication Arts mm -hmm. Learning Center. And she simply told me, this is it. So we are here. And we never thought that that was the last time that she saw the place. Mm -hmm. So um, my mom, um, I would say has served as my inspiration. My dad as well, but my mom, an educator, has always uh, been telling us it's legacy to have this and that, to educate children, to touch people's lives. And I would always say that she's just there, guiding us. This is a fulfillment of a dream. <laughs> yes, family, for the family. Mm -hmm. Not for me alone, but for the family. And one good thing is everybody's helping. Bernard is helping, Dana, my eldest child, is helping. And uh, from uh, uh, Georgia, a little bit from Gino until the youngest. Because I would always tell them, this is not for me, this is for you because I age. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have this 15 hour duty every month. Because I don't want to endorse the school to them when everything is ready. Sure. I want them to feel back. They have to learn the rules. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. By the way, how many children yes. do you have? Well, five out of love, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> you have five children, you are teaching and now you're manning a business. How do you manage these things? It's something that I love to do and you would forget about time. If it's your passion, if it's something that comes from the heart, it comes out so naturally. Mm. Bernard would say, Marge, you know what, you're not feeling well, you have to rest. And I would hear about the laughter of the children on the other side and I would say, I would just see the children. I do not know. It comes out so naturally. I love children in the office. I don't have the door, I don't have the wall because I want to see them pass by every day. Mm. And they would say, Tita Margie, Tita Margie. Why are you Margie? Now you have over 100 kids yeah. in the school. We started mm. with 40, mm. and now we're almost 200. And we're still in our grade two, we're opening grade three. Mm. But the number of students per class still the same. 
maximum number of students, which is you know, add another section mm -hmm. and then another room because we want to maintain the maximum number of students. Because I always place myself, if I were the teacher and I would be given 18 only, mm -hmm. then there is quantity. Correct, yeah. Uh -huh. You can maximize your time with the students. Um, one good thing is because I've been teaching for the longest time, so I always place myself in the shoes of the teacher. I always would do that. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, as managing partner of, of the training group mm -hmm. that you also organized, you went to different areas across the country, also <laughs> educating um, yes. not just students, but <laughs> teachers and trainers yes. in different areas of, of journalism, mm -hmm. uh, broadcasting, writing, and all those things. What made you, yeah, areas of communication? It started this way. Rico um, got so many invitations from different sectors. Rico might was my student. Rico Lucena, yeah. Okay. He was also here with us at one time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm um, broadcasting, right? Yes, yes. Well, I live here in the United States, but I'm becoming that. Anyway, and I also had a number of invitations from different sectors. I told Rico, why don't we form a group? Mm. So at least if there are three heads now, Dana is part of this. Mm. Your core of competence is this, my core of competence is this, Dana's core of competence is this. Mm. So we came up with this group, Com Arts Training Group, but we made sure that Dana's assignment is this, Rico's assignment is this, my assignment is this. And there was so much fun because we started with hopping from one division to another, yeah. from one sector to another. So basically, I wouldn't say it's work, it's learning in the middle of fun and fellowship because if there would be a one and a half day training, um, both would leave at, in the evening, so there is what more or less six hours of waiting, I would not just be inside the room. I would be seeing the place, I would be gallivanting somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So it's not work, but mm -hmm. it's learning, it's earning, <laughs> it's enjoying. <laughs> you, mentioned, it. you mentioned Dana several times. Dana is your eldest. Yeah. <laughs> your daughter, <laughs> Dana Parilia now. Again. <laughs> I guess she's watching. <laughs> Hi, Dana. Hi, Dana. My only girl. Yeah, oh, yes, 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 yes. And Dana is, uh, of course, uh, in Manila right now, so I'm surrounded with boys. It's mm. raining, man. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> since, since she's your eldest, and I don't want to put Dana on, on the hot seat, but <laughs> your mom is here on the hot seat. What did you tell her about men? I always you know, um, tell all my children, if you're not really, uh, okay, if you fall in love, Make sure you have to leave something for yourself. Don't let other people step on your toes, as long as you also don't step on their toes. That's basically the rule. Leave something for yourself. That's it. Do you agree, Mom Carmen? You have three, do three daughters, <laughs> correct? Two? Two, two, two daughters. Oh, three, three. It's my boy. <laughs> Your daughter here has lost count. <laughs> your three daughters. What did you? Same question. I have not. I have not been into that situation yet. <laughs> I I do not know. Uh, if I I think if I will be in that situation where if I I I they are. I think that the only two of them are left, no, not unmarried. The other one is already married. Uh, when my doctor asked me, Mom, um, is it all right if I marry a person uh, and there's one aspect in him that I don't like? Mm. I, I told her, if you can, if you can manage to uh, live with it, then you may marry him because I would not expect you to to ask him to change himself because it's not easy for a person to change himself or herself for that matter. So if you think you can live with it, then go. But if you think Think hard. If you think that you cannot live with it, 
that thing that you do not like in him, then don't marry him. Very nice takeaways for the young viewers. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. Today, you are the president of Kapamilya Negosya na USC, USC uh, a project of the University of San Carlos Alumni Association and the group is now um, on its way of becoming a foundation Hopefully, we are now on our 13th year and What do you do in the organization? We empower We empower people to 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 go into business, uh, we empower people, we teach them how to go into business. Mm. And then when they are ready, we give them capital. And, but despite, uh, as after giving capital, we keep empowering in their mouth. Mm. We are now in our 13th year, we are still in touch with our uh, winners from first year, year one. I see. Uh, uh, some have lost we have lost contact with them because mm -hmm. you know cell phones it's very easy to throw your SIM card. <laughs> <laughs> so long time then we got called me to attend this meeting, to, uh, to attend uh, lectures. We keep on training them. We have not stopped training them. So if there's a training and there's one coming mm -hmm. in April, bookkeeping for an accountants, bookkeeping symbols, I bookkeeping so that they would know if they are progressing. So we call on all of them and then ask them to attend. This is for both women and men, correct? Okay, both women and men. Um, so after after we give them capital, we still keep on following it up. Mm. Following them up. And we try to see if there is something that they need help from us. Mm. If they if they have a uh, Say like for example, one comes in, and mom. Uh, I have a, a, a person here is wanting me to be a, to, wanting to be a partner mm -hmm. in, in his business. So sure. what will I do? So I I just tell him to you let him write down what he is expected. He mm -hmm. is expecting from you, and then uh, show it to us. Talk to a lawyer. If everything is all right, then. Go. Does the organization continue to support the businesses? Um, we, the secret of a, a successful business is marketing. Mm -hmm. So we help in the marketing. Mm -hmm. So so if you go and visit our place, then uh, we get to eat something. Mm -hmm. It's most often mm -hmm. it's a product of USDKMM. Mm -hmm. We help them, we help them, we help them market because that is the most important thing in a business, marketing. Do you think outside of your own initiatives, do you think general um, efforts to promote women's rights, uh, promote and protect women's rights and welfare are enough? Are, are we doing enough? Are we doing well in this area based on what you've seen? Um. From my end, it's not enough because as long as we keep on promoting the women's welfare the protection, point, yeah. so it means we there's a lot more to do. Yes, and uh, in the Philippines, for instance, there is an, the rights of women are increasing because of a number mm. of women legislators mm. and decision makers. They also help pave the way mm. to you know have. Uh, Basically, they, they, they paved the way, like, uh, I would say, we just keep on promoting all these things. We should not stop. Mm. Beyond Women's Month. Uh -huh. mm. Yes, yes. Whereas now, as there is one woman complaining, there is still a need for helping women. Mm. For as long as there is one woman complaining, um, you know, during our time, um, somebody pokes on you, you don't mind, right? If somebody pokes on you, they march, march, you don't mind. But now, if somebody pokes on you, you can be 
accused of sexual harassment. Mm. But, so there's that protection. But um, as we progress, as we progress, uh, there are still some areas where, where um, it's not acceptable. An action is not acceptable. So uh, if a person complains about it, then there is still a need for mm -hmm. more protection mm -hmm. for women. Clear the points. On a positive note, you might have mentioned a few earlier, but I'd like to ask, what do you think are your qualities as a woman that make you successful in what you do? <laughs> this is your month, so you have, you have the license. Uh. Um, ego. <laughs> I am empowered. I, I, I know what I am doing, and I believe that uh, I am doing things correctly. And, and if you leave me wherever, I can manage to roll my boat. Very nice. Independence. Mm -hmm. Momaji. Communicating where my heart is. Mm -hmm. So it's communicating from the heart and then learning while having fun. Mm -hmm. Practicing that attitude of gratitude. My mom and dad would always say, successful people are grateful people. Mm -hmm. So practicing that attitude of gratitude and then giving back what you have been given mm -hmm. to the people who are working with you for them to have better lives. Mm -hmm. Practicing humility. Mm -hmm. These are the factors. But what prevails here is the attitude of gratitude. Thank you, my arms. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is a legitimate question, but how do you continue to be humble? How do you keep your feet grounded? How do you keep yourself grounded when you have already achieved so much? These are just temporary, actually. These two will pass. And we always, from my end, I don't put success here, it's here. Is always here. Mm -hmm. I still ride tricycle. Mm -hmm. You have tricycle, and then I still walk from the sub to school, the that store to school, because after all, these are all passing. And how I wish my children would see these points. So they always, I always tell them, you know what, success should be here. Not here. Very nice, Mo Carmen. Well, I come from a family who is not really, um, they, they are just, uh, my, my father and mother are so humble, they are not, uh, they are not the extravagant type, they are not the, the social, social type, they are, they, they're just for us. They're just for us. So um, every time there, there's a family gathering, they, um, my mother would always make sure that we are all happy. And uh, my mother is, if you could see my mother, she's, she's, she's straight. She, she, she's strict, but when she, she she opens up her heart, she's very very loving, mm -hmm. and she's very giving. So um, you 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 cannot you cannot hear her boast. No, so that's what we have in our family also. My brothers, my sisters. If you have not seen me in my in the limelight for quite a time, you have never seen my my brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> we are just happy where we are. We're just happy where we are. 
and uh, we have kept the family values in us. Mm -hmm. And I hopefully that those values will be also in our children. And one of them is listening to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> we ask <Yeah>. this. <laughs> yeah. 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 We we really value family. We really value family. That's why um maybe for Chappie, every time we have a party mm. and Where's Chappie? Where's Chappie? Where's Chappie? <laughs> they would ask me, especially when was at the time when she was my visit with those masters. Mm -hmm. So now when she comes to the party, she's like, present, present, present. <laughs> <laughs> even, even now, uh, we gather, we take time to gather together and um, be with each other. Uh, my parents are already dead and it's my our elder sister who's taking the touches of <laughs> gathering us. Very nice, very nice messages. We ask our guests in Power Women to comment on words from perhaps one of the women of the hour, Megan Markle. She's a future wife of Prince Harry. She <laughs> said in one of the gatherings in the UK that women don't need to find their voice. They have a voice and they only need to use it and that the public or the people need to be encouraged to listen. What are your thoughts? Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we really have our voice. It's, it's a matter of empowering us and empowering people because when they are empowered, they can, they can do anything they can do. Uh, they can do so many things. They mm -hmm. can, they for themselves, for their family, for their, for the community. They, um, if you give them the voice, they will, um, they will have the, the competence. And if they have the competence, they will have the confidence. So that would make them better woman. Nice. How much? Women have a voice, but what matters more is knowing and having the courage to use this voice decisively. Mm -hmm. Of course, to promote women's protection, welfare, and also by looking at men as equal. Mm -hmm. Not never superior nor inferior so it's just a matter of knowing and using this voice as i see so i now will have a voice my father and everything <laughs> okay i will give you this opportunity to your message give your message to your fellow women and to the men watching us watch out <laughs> According to what? <laughs> <laughs> well, long carbs. Um, there's so much place for women out there. You only have to show that courage that you can do things you want to do. And when you do that, you will be happy. And we are happy, the family is happy. Mm. Your right? message to the men. <laughs> <laughs> to Sir Abe. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. I love you. By the way, yeah, before we go to Momarji, um, future pr projects of KNN? Um, Schedules? Yeah. We have that uh, on this seminar, but it's a cycle. It's a cycle which we keep on doing every year, every year, you know. So uh, this year we're expecting to get uh, another funding from the Department of Labor and Employment. They offer us, they give us money to give to the to our winners. We call them winners, the, the, the persons we give capital to. Mm -hmm. We give capital to. We do not ask them to return it to us. Mm -hmm. give it to them. So um, hopefully 
um, we will be having more activities and more we really hope to give to more people more bene uh, more beneficiaries because uh, we believe that um, one way one way of improving your life is through entrepreneurship you will not only improve your life you will also improve the lives of your neighbors mm -hmm. whom you will hopefully employ in your business and um, you will you will have a more um, more for your family mm. right your radio radio uh, program yes uh, we, we have our radio programs every Saturday from 12.30 to 2 o'clock. It's there where we discuss business, uh, management uh, topics to help the entrepreneurs out there. Mm -hmm. even, even, even those who are just listeners, they can mm. learn from the discussion mm. and uh, it's also there that we get to uh, promote the products of our, of our your beneficiaries. Beneficiaries. Yeah, your beneficiaries. This is of course uh, via BYAB. BYAB, yes. And we've been partners with BYAB for the, from the beginning, mm. from, day, uh, from year one to we are now on our year 13th March, so mm -hmm. as, I, as I was telling, as I keep on telling people, we are now on our, uh, this year, we are on our 13th year, so we have been doing this for a long time, so we must be doing something right. Yeah, uh, I believe you must have been doing something right to last this long. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would like to also uh, thank our partners, no? Our partners are the University of San Carlos School of Business and Economics. Um, we have ABS, BBM, BYAB, and uh, the Department of Labor and Employment. Mm. Without the Department of Labor and Employment, I don't think we could have lasted this long. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine giving, uh, at the start, we were giving 10,000 per beneficiary mm. from our uh, kind of solicitations from our solicitations it came to a point where uh, we, we, we were starting to lose our friends <laughs> <laughs> when they see us they turn around <laughs> 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 when they see us they turn around because um, they just come and they soliciting again but I was not ashamed doing such because I was not doing it for myself. Mm. It was I was doing it for others. No? So the Department of Labor and Employment, and now we have uh, a new partner, the um, Department of Fine Arts of the University of San Carlos. Mm. Um, they help prepare the law book for mm. our beginners. Very nice. And 13 more years 13 more to KNN. Years. <laughs> I, I, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> For March? I will live that long. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> We're going Marjorie. to be graceful, yeah? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's really really yes really your message to uh, your fellow nice. women first and then okay. to the men. Let's have the men first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's okay, it's okay. Actually, for the women, well, we have to value ourselves mm -hmm. everything starts within ourselves mm -hmm. because we have to empower ourselves because if we do that we have the right it could be very easy for us to empower other people mm -hmm. so that self-value is very very important mm -hmm. who else will love with ourselves right. for men out there take good care of us we're the endangered species <laughs> 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 well, Carmen, thank you very much for coming over thank and spending you. time with us for March. Thank you very much to both of you for being here and saying yes to be in Power Women. Happy Mother's, uh, not Happy, happy Women's Month. 
to both of you. And of course, Advanced Happy Mother's Day is going to be in May, right? <laughs> Am I correct? <laughs> June. 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 Somewhere there. And next week of uh, May. May. Yeah. May. Yeah. May. And again, thank you and we wish you both the very best of luck. Thank you. To, <laughs> to our guests today in Power Women, we have Marjorie Visitashan, the Directress of Communication Arts Learning Center and Managing Partner of Communication Arts Training Group. An actress. <laughs> endorser. <laughs> An endorser. A mother. Friend. And a woman. And of course, we have former Civil City Councilor Carmen Piravide, who is now the President of Capamilia Negociana. Also a mother. And of course, a woman. Thank you very much for joining us today in this edition of Power Women and join our other episodes in the future as we continue to pay tribute to women who are not afraid to make a difference. I am Jobert Oka, online editor of The Freeman. Thanks for joining us. See you again next time here on The Freeman Conversations. <laughs>